Today we're going back to basics with marinara sauce. Hey everyone and welcome back to my kitchen. Today we are going back to basics and making homemade marinara sauce. This is one of the most versatile sauces in your toolbox and it's always great to have a little in the freezer. As always the ingredients are listed on the screen and the full recipe can be found on the channel's website homestylecookingwithjen.com. If you enjoy recipe videos and the occasional grocery haul, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and don't forget the notification bell. If you're enjoying this video so far, hit the like button. It really does help out the channel. And if you have any cooking related questions or you would like to see a specific recipe, leave me a comment down below. All right, let's get started. In a high sided skillet or a saucepan, add a couple of tablespoons of olive oil and then your onions and garlic. We are going to saute the onions until they are softened and caramelized, which will take approximately 8 to 10 minutes. The key is to have your onions caramelized and not burnt, so you will need to keep an eye on the process, but it is very forgiving. Keep stirring your onions occasionally until they have good color. You want them to be a deep golden brown like mine. And then add about a half a cup of white wine or chicken broth and keep stirring or whisking until the wine has reduced by at least half. A quick note about using wine in recipes. If you're worried about young children eating meals with alcohol in them, don't worry, the cooking process always cooks out the alcohol. And two, if you're using wine in a recipe, always use a wine that you will drink. Never use cooking wine or a very cheap wine because bad ingredients equals bad results. Now it's time to add the tomatoes. I'm using two large cans of tomatoes instead of three smaller cans and use any brand. Crushed tomatoes are crushed tomatoes. You don't have to get real fancy with them. Stir the tomatoes, onion, and garlic until they are well combined. Seasoning for marinara sauce is very important so be sure to add liberal amounts of salt and pepper. If you're using dried herbs you'll want to add them in this step. If not you'll add them closer to the end. Also, don't forget your sugar. It only takes a pinch, maybe less than a third of a tablespoon, but you don't want to forget it because you'll need to cut the acidity of the tomatoes. I usually add seasoning in layers and stir in between. So I started with my salt, pepper, and sugar, and now I'm adding my dried basil to the pan. You can use dry or fresh herbs, it really doesn't matter, but the key is to incorporate all of your seasoning in as well as humanly possible. You don't want any pockets of one flavor. Now you have all your seasoning in the pan, give it a good stir, and then cover it with a lid. Vent it slightly. All we're trying to do is to prevent the sauce from bubbling all over the stove. Reduce the heat and simmer for approximately 30 minutes. A little over halfway through the cooking process, go ahead and add your fresh herbs. I'm adding my parsley here. Give it a good stir and then cover again. Bring your sauce back to a simmer and allow it to go for the remaining amount of time. Once the time is up, take the lid off the pan and give your marinara sauce one more good stir. And then you can serve it on just about anything. One suggestion is to pair this marinara sauce with my homemade calzones. I'll leave a link in the description below to that recipe and I'll also leave a card in the corner. Tonight, however, we're going old school with a little rigatoni with red sauce. Just add your pasta to a plate and pile on the sauce. And don't forget to add your Parmesan cheese because as you know in this house, we love cheese. And that's dinner, so I hope everyone stays happy, healthy, and as always, well fed.